Morning everyone, my name is Mr. Polly and I'm here today with uh, Chanel and Chosen, both from P6A. Hi. Hi. So today guys, I'm going to have a little chat with you about art from the 20th century, which is something a little bit different to what we usually do. So, what's interesting about this is, remember when I was uh, showing you these pictures before, this kind of art is part of a movement called Cubism. Yeah. yeah. So you guys know what a cube is, right? Yeah, so yeah. I'm pretty sure it's part of the, uh, sure it's part of the Surrealist movement of mm, the 20th century. Close, close. But actually the Surrealist movement came afterwards. Oh, really? And this was uh, one, of the, one of the first attempts to try to show things uh, in a non-traditional way on a canvas, on a painting. So well, the idea of cubism is it's supposed to show you the object or objects from multiple different perspectives at the same time. Ooh. So, for example, here, you know, uh, you're saying this is a pear. I mean, it doesn't quite look exactly like a pear, does it? You can see like one side of the pear being shown here and then maybe the other side of the pear being shown here. But that doesn't make sense from a single fixed perspective painting, does it? Right. Uh, and we've got some other objects here. This just looks like a colorful static TV. Oh, uh, yeah. Into... I wonder what that's supposed to be, actually. Uh, it's just there. It's literally just there, I think. <laughs> it's a glitch in the matrix. Like, like Picasso thought it looks cool, so just put it there, I think. I don't think so at all, no, actually. Like, it definitely, so it look definitely has meaning, but I don't know what, so I'm just saying that. I would say that this is probably some kind of cloth on the table that's hanging off. Oh. Do you guys think that this is a good painting? Yeah, there's definitely a lot of work put into it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a lot and of I can I can actually there's recognize no what it is. Okay, because you know that's, that's a table, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, and that's I mean, a... if it includes includes death, I don't think it's the best best painting in the world. No, it probably might, and it's definitely not the best painting in the world. I don't know. I don't know there's where probably the part nothing. Death is. Like nothing. I don't think you could really name a best painting in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no such Art is subjective. Whatever. Art is subjective. So that's very, very interesting as well, yeah, right? Because um, that's part of what he's looking at here. It's, it's, he's painting a picture of something from his own perspective. What's that funny building? Perspectives. Is this a building? I don't know. It like, looks like... I don't know. I think that might be a window or something. You might be right. But what I find really interesting is this is the skirting board, right? Well, that separates the, the wall board. and the... Oh, I think this is that's what it's called. I thought it was just this painting. Wall like in the like... floor. Oh, you think that yeah. one's dreamlike? Okay, let's have yeah. a look at our next one, just, which is. They just come up in your dreams. Which is. Just oh, random uh... pictures. <gasps> da -da. Okay, there Ooh. we go. So this one, which is not a very high resolution picture, is by an artist nice. called Salvador Dali. And this one is a very, very famous painting. Yeah, I'm pretty so sure too. we have. It outside, do we? Probably, there's probably a print of it somewhere in the school. I wouldn't be surprised. So this one is about 15 years later, 1931, and you were talking about surrealism, right? So surrealism is a slightly later movement, and what he was painting is things that had this kind of dreamlike or nightmarish quality to them. But you know. What's amazing about Salvador Dali stuff is if you compare that to the Picasso painting we were looking at previously, yeah. just double checking, you can see this one is actually like, I know the quality of it's not very good. It's actually much more realistic in a way, isn't it? But the subject is much more strange. So what do you guys think of this painting? Yeah. I like it. You like it? Yeah. Okay. I think I rec I don't know. Look, look, you see this mountain? I, I really don't you know, know why, but I recognize. Mountain. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, yeah the windows desktop mountain, right? It's yeah. Right there. Yeah, but no, all mountains like yeah, yeah. I, like. They're all. Like whenever whenever I see like any sort of cliff that mm. sort of resembles a cliff, I just think it looks familiar for some odd reason. I think I know why now. You know what? I think that that's part of it as well right have you ever had those dreams where you see somewhere that looks familiar yeah and it's like oh i'm in my hometown or something and then you wake up and you realize that's not what my hometown looks like this is just the dream version of it right right and i think that that's that's what i like about these i think it really captures that idea of like this familiarity 
but it's somehow like this, different. This as looks well. like a weird sweater. That's a claw. It's a melting oh, claw. Oh, oh. So we'll have a look at one last one very quickly. So this one is from 1947. So it's another roughly 15 years after that one. Okay. So this one is by an artist called Jackson Pollock. Reflections of the Big Dipper. So the Big Dipper, as you mentioned earlier, is a constellation. It's mm. a collection of stars in the sky. But what do you guys think of this one? You said it looked like a pile of garbage before. No, I think you were talking now, about a different no, one. No, it just looks like a, a character that I was in, in my dream. I don't know. I think it would look like that's their I think I've seen other Jackson Pollock mm -hmm. paintings before, and I, they, I think they look better than this one. Okay. Because it's just a sort of collection of colors and shapes, isn't it? Yeah. Right. But this, um, you know, remember we were looking at the other paintings, and you were saying, oh, they're quite good. Like, definitely there's some technical ability that you can have a look at here uh, in these other two. But how about this one? Do you think this this is a very skillful painting? Oh, um, he actually, I'm pretty sure he did put effort into this since... Uh, oh, effort, he, sure. Yeah, he did put, he did use different materials for the canvas, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh you know no! Like, he like used to paint this. Like like um. Oh yeah yeah. He used to drip it, but like yeah. like he for texture. So. He would lay out the canvas. Yeah. A huge canvas on the floor of his garage. And then, like, and know, then know, put but... ladders across. Walk across and just go. <laughs> so lots of people thought that this painting was very very low skill, because of how easy it. Like, any you could go home and do that, right? Just drip some paint. I don't, I don't think you could really replicate. I mean, re replicate. Is that replicate, how you say it? Yep. Yeah, replicate. Hey, some of his paintings definitely not. Mm. Like, yeah. There's like certain style to it, I think. Okay. No, I don't. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Can't copy the same, like. Yeah. Or the idea, right? Yeah. Because all of these paintings here, they're definitely not as impressive as, say, like the Mona Lisa or something like that. But they all have this sort of originality about it, right? And as you said, what did you say before? Art is very subjective, whether you like it or not. Or not. That's something that comes from your own understanding of it. I hope that uh, you guys found this as interesting as I found it. Did you guys find this interesting to look at as well? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Right, so that's our, uh, this video will be out on Monday. I don't know why I tell you that, because by the time you see this video, you've already seen it. So anyway, let's now do the I outro, okay? If we get more than a thousand likes on this video, Starbucks. Uh, Chanel will be providing Starbucks to all no, all the Mr. Provide. Pollies in the school. Yeah. And um, yeah, thank you for joining me. Can you guys say goodbye? Remember to like, subscribe, and hit the uh, bye -bye. stuff. Bye bye. Morning, everyone. My name is Mr. Polly, and I'm here today with uh, Chanel and Chosen, both from P6A. Hi. Hi. So today, guys, I'm going to have a little chat with you about art from the 20th century, which is something a little bit different to what we usually do. Oh. So, 